Live on WFLA Now, with a specialized degree in climate, Chief Meteorologist and Climate Specialist Jeff Berardelli is pioneering the way we look at climate and extreme weather. Welcome to Jeff's Climate Classroom, powered by Armor View Window and Door. Yes, welcome to Climate Classroom. <laughs> I'm glad you're here with us today. We're going to be talking about some very interesting stuff. And what we want to do today is really focus on your questions. So what questions do you have for myself and also, oh, my guest, let me bring her on right now, <laughs> our very own Val Simpson, who is climate curious, as That's I right. like to say. We have these great conversations every night where yes. she asks me lots of questions. And so we thought it would be a good one to kind of open this up to the audience. And we know that we're going to get really crazy comments on Facebook. <laughs> you would not, but I mean, if you want entertainment, yes. just watch and this look at the comments that are going to be on Facebook because they'll be crazy. Okay. But we don't want just crazy comments. We would like constructive questions yeah. as well. And to kind of get the ball rolling, we're just going to mm -hmm. kind of jump right in, Val. And we're going sure. to start with our own uh, what we call climate change, climate change myths. Yeah, I know you're very excited to I, jump right yes, into but you it. Want to I just tell want people something. Yes, I okay. do. I want to remind everybody that I have my trusty buzzer with me. So if you've seen some of these episodes, you know the drill. If there's something that Jeff goes on a rampage on, we're gonna like just take and it down. And electrocute me. Yeah, no, she's I want to electrocute me with that buzzer. Actually, last time you said that, yes, that was pretty funny. I wish that it worked that way, but it doesn't. And then also, just like Jeff said, I will be taking questions or comments, and I'll. Uh, forward on that them ridiculous and facilitate contraption the, that she calls that. a phone. I mean, come on, what, I think what is it's that pretty thing? clever. You can hang it. You don't forget it anywhere. I love oh, it. Oh, you like don't a forget chain. it. You forget it almost <laughs> every night. What are you talking That's about? True. I forget it in the studio all the time. Okay. Touche, touche. Right, exactly. All right. But yeah, now we can go ahead and get started because this is a great episode. I know that a lot of folks have a lot of questions mm -hmm. in terms of climate change. We've discussed them, like you said, every night. And one of the ones that I've heard a lot uh, and actually, we did talk about it, too, because it was something that I also thought and we had conversations about this is that climate change is natural. It's something that, you know, we can't help it. It's going to happen. That's well, true. But over tens of thousands of years, it's true. Yes, climate change is, in fact, natural, but we've added a human component. So that's one. I want to go through all these questions real quick. Uh, the second one we're going to address is it was a cold winter here. Global warming cancel. Yeah. OK, that's another one. Uh, here's another one. There is no scientific consensus Ooh. on climate change. Okay, that's, that's the good. third one we'll handle. We can't trust the climate models. That's another one we will handle. And the last one, okay, you got me. It's real, but it is too late to do anything about it. Yes. With all of that said, um, we are right after that going to be taking your climate questions. Okay, so first, first things first. The first one was climate change is natural, right? right? Now, this is super cool, folks. Let's talk about what is natural climate mm -hmm. change. I'm going to bring it up. Uh, what dictates natural climate change, and it does happen, we go in and out of ice ages over the course of about 100,000 years. Every 100,000 years, we have an ice age. And the reason is we have the Earth's tilt and the Earth's eccentricity and also its obliquity, as we call it. We're only addressing the first two. We're not addressing the obliquity. Obli but basically what that means is that the Earth has a tilt, but it doesn't yeah. stay at the same tilt. It mm -hmm. kind of wobbles on its tilt, and it also wobbles on its orbit a little bit. And then the, uh, on the right side, you see that the Earth's orbit around the sun is not an exact circle. It's actually an yeah. ellipse. Sometimes it's a wider ellipse, sometimes less. Mm -hmm. And that changes the amount of sunlight that the Earth receives. And so therefore, over the course gotcha. of, of tens of thousands of years, our temperatures change because of the amount of sunlight that we're getting, less or more. Right. And so the result of that is look at the record of temperatures over the last million years. We get mm -hmm. this from sediment cores and from ice cores mm -hmm. and from all kinds of what we call paleoclimate data. And look at that. First of all, I'll show you that the difference between a warm period and an ice age is only 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. Wow. 10 degrees Fahrenheit That's dictates it. whether we're in an ice age or a warm period. Obviously, right yeah. now we're in a warm period. Mm -hmm. uh, about 20, 25,000 years ago, we had an ice age. So you could see that there are natural reasons why our temperatures go up and down by around 10 degrees. And it right. takes us from an ice age where ice comes, goes down to about New York City or so yeah. to a warm period where ice is way up in just the Arctic. Uh, yeah. OK, so that's that. And then uh, let's look at recent climate change. You can see actually global temperatures have been fairly constant over the past 10,000 years. There have been some ups and downs. Mm -hmm. uh, but look at how it has skyrocketed since around, honestly, since around 1970, 1980, actually, mm. most of it. Yeah. But but really, it started around the late 1800s or so. You can see how it's just kind of straight yeah. up. Yeah, so that's not natural. That you can just look at that and you know it's, right. it's not off. natural. That's yeah. right. And here's the reason. Take a look at our increase in carbon dioxide. Uh, that's a record of 800,000 years, and it's very simple. We just look at ice core records, and we look at the bubbles inside the ice cores. And whatever is trapped there, we know that that was the atmosphere, 100,000 or 200,000. Yeah. So we look at that uh, uh, those bubbles, and like we say, okay. Like the rings on a tree. 
Yeah, it's the same thing. Gonna... We use the trees, except we can only go back like a thousand years on trees. Maybe okay. A little more than that. But anyway, we can go back about 800,000 years and now even more than that. And we can see that carbon dioxide is rising faster here in this graphic yeah. uh, than it ever has in the last million years or so. And it's rising at 100 times the natural rate. Look at that on the right. You can wow. see that big spike yeah. there. That's what's happened over the past hundred years or so. Um, right. So that is the answer to that question. Val, I'm going to yeah. put you back on screen. Do you have sure. any questions about what we just covered? Well, yes. Yeah, so how, when does it start changing so drastically? What happens? When does that turn happen? Why did it turn? We, mm -hmm. well, we invented the combustion engine mm -hmm. and we started burning fossil fuels, whether it be coal or whether it be oil or gas. And we've been releasing a lot of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Now, one thing that people who are smart that are skeptical of climate change will say, well, carbon dioxide is just a teeny part of the atmosphere. It is yeah. very small. Yeah. Uh, and they may also say that carbon dioxide is not the main forcer. They're right. It's actually water vapor. But what starts the ball rolling is as the carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere and it increases the temperatures, the atmosphere can then soak in more water vapor. That water vapor then starts to heat the atmosphere. Heat, right. And that heating of the atmosphere releases more carbon dioxide and so on and so forth. So the, the, the forcing mechanism is the carbon dioxide, which accounts for a good portion of it. But yeah. water vapor actually is a stronger driver of climate change. But again, you can't get the water vapor to go up. Right. Unless carbon dioxide goes up first to increase temperature. Something has to go something has to happen to increase temperatures first before right. your water vapor can go up. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. You want to go to the next one? Sure. Let's move on to the next one, which what is, is uh well, it's been the coldest winter we've had. So mm -hmm. that just cancels global warming. <laughs> well, actually, it, of course, it hasn't been the coldest winter we've had in the Tampa area, but uh, sometimes people will say it's been cold all month, right? Right. All right. So let me show you the temperatures from January, this January. And if you were living in, like, the Plain States, mm -hmm. you're thinking, wow, this was a cold Super. January. Right. How could global warming be real if it's colder than normal? Actually, it was 2 to 4 degrees below normal. That's pretty substantial. Yeah. However, all we have to do is zoom out, and you see that everybody around that, with the exception of Western Canada there, Canada, is yeah. way above normal. And if you look closely enough, look at, Can look at Eastern Canada. Mm -hmm. 10 to 12 degrees above normal during the month of January. OK, wow, yeah. so all you have to do is get away from your local area and look at the globe. And on average, by far, many more places are warming than they're cooling. I'll show you one more thing. Over the past 12 months, including this past month. So the past 12 months. So basically this past April and then you can rewind down last to last March or something like that, 2023. Well, that's the ranking of North America in terms of was it the warmest or was it the coolest? Well, you don't see yeah. any coolest. No you really blue. don't even see any blue. Nothing. What you see is the red, and that deep, yeah. deep shade of red, that's the warmest 12-month period on record for the majority, almost all of Canada, and for a good chunk or at least a, a decent portion of the United States. So you know, just because in your area it's been cold or it's been cold for the last week or two uh, doesn't in any way, shape, or form mean that— um, When you take that wider yeah. look, that's right. you need yeah. to know what's going on in uh -huh. yeah, other areas. I see. Do you want me to take a look? Should we take a moment to see if there's yeah, any questions can, you know, right now we on go to social the next media? One, we have canned questions, but sure. Yeah. Let's and see. Do you want to do that when, while I address the next question? This way you have time to kind of, or do you already have yeah. a question? Okay. No, go ahead. You okay. can go, you can do All that. Right, which by the way, is that there is no scientific consensus. Okay. Is that true? Well, okay. While I do this, Val, you're going to be searching for questions, questions from our viewers that don't have curses in them. Okay. <laughs> I want you to avoid I the ones. Go on air. Yes. The threatening ones with, with, with disparaging <laughs> language. I want you to avoid if you can. I'll okay. try. All right. So, uh, there is a consensus. Uh, we started studying this and there've been many studies on this, uh, about a decade ago, maybe a little more than that. And what we found when we first looked into it is that the consensus was somewhere between 93 and 97%, depending upon which periodical uh, you were looking at which study. So essentially, of scientists who study climate change, not random, you know, medical doctors, not podiatrists, we're not asking podiatrists, we're asking scientists who actually study the atmosphere, and more specifically, uh, climate, although podiatrists are great, I'm not disparaging <laughs> podiatrists. Okay, if you ask people who, who actually study this stuff, mm -hmm. at this point, after many, many, many studies, and it's grown over the past decade, it's now somewhere around 99 to 100% of scientists who agree that two things. The climate is changing, and number two, that it's being caused mainly by humans, okay? Mm -hmm. But here's the problem that we have, Val. There is a big consensus gap. Only 55% of U.S. citizens know that the majority of scientists agree that the climate is changing. So this makes people think, well, maybe scientists, you know, don't agree on this. Maybe there's disagreement. Honestly, to go back to the graphic here, the scientists that are out there that disagree— yeah. 
most of them, I'm not going to say all of them, but most yeah. of them are usually being paid by special interests. We know that because they've done this before in their career for different things. There are people who are experts, they say, in climate yeah. change, who say that climate change is not real, who actually worked in other industries also sowing doubt and denial years ago. So there really isn't any true... Uh, scientific community that doesn't think climate change is happening there there is a legitimate a difference val in yeah. in in how fast some scientists think that this is going to cripple us or going to impact us there Good are some point. that think it's going to happen tomorrow and there are some that think it's going to happen later that we have time and that you know that's a legitimate discussion and also mm -hmm. how to solve climate change there are various ways that we do it but there's a, a room for a discussion there as well you know, let me show you one more thing. Yeah. Uh, it's not just us. It's other countries, too, that don't understand that scientists agree. But the consensus, uh, it, it, the German citizenry and even UK, they know generally and understand a little bit better that climate scientists are on board with climate change and they right. believe it's being caused by humans. Okay. Well, then, then yeah. that makes sense because mm -hmm. uh, basically there is consensus in the scientific industry. It's just that maybe there's different topics that they're not like how to solve it or mm -hmm. perhaps um, how fast it's happening, which is what you said. Yeah, so I, I, did, we, I we understand all, that. Yeah, I think and even more so beyond just like how fast how fast it's happening, we kind of all agree on how fast it's happening, but how fast will that debilitate society or the earth, right? Yeah. You know, how much time do we have before we really need to get to work? And almost all scientists agree we need to do it now. But anyway. Yeah. Your comment brings me to a question that okay. I just saw on Facebook. Let me see here. I want to read it and I want to give the person's name. We do have a couple of comments too. This is from Evan Williams. He says, are we doomed? That's a great question. And we're going to address that as our last question to some degree. But no, I am not an alarmist. I'm not a doomer. People always accuse me of being an alarmist because I share scientific data. Actually, I'll be honest with you. I share the scientific data because I find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. I am really just so interested in science to begin with. I'm a bit of a nerd and a geek. And so when new information comes out, I want to share it with the public. I want yeah. you to see because I find it, you know, just fascinating mm -hmm. what's happening. And look, it is I'm concerned about our future, no doubt. At the same time, we're living in a time where humans, because there's eight billion of us, have the power to actually have a big influence on the climate. And so we're conducting an experiment. And like any good scientist, mm -hmm. I'm interested in the results of that experiment. Right. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm also very cautious and concerned about what we're doing. We're basically guinea pigs in this mm -hmm. experiment that we didn't realize was an experiment until maybe a few decades ago. Right. Um, but we are. Yeah. Now we're re we're literally investigating this in real time. We are the 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 rats yes. in, in this experiment. Yeah. Um, but I'm not an alarmist and I'm not a doomer. So I will say, no, there's time to change course. Here's the great thing, and I always say this. If you have some type of cancer mm -hmm. that is incurable, mm -hmm. the doctor is going to say to you, I'm so sorry, we, we, we know you have cancer, but we don't know how to fix it. That's really sad, but when it comes to climate change, we know how to fix it, and we now finally, after decades, have all, almost all the solutions that we need. We still have some technological advances needed to get us you know, to 100% of having solutions, but we have most of the solutions. That is mainly clean energy. Oh, and by the way, stop chopping down trees if you can. Okay. And, you know, that would be nice. You know, build build our forest back, yes. but also burn less fossil fuels yeah. and and increase our, our share of clean energy. That gets us 70, 80% of the way there, and then there are other things that we need to do as well. But yeah, yeah. we have the solutions. We mm -hmm. just need the willpower. And you know what? So we don't even need to address the last question because I just addressed it. I know, we'll do I it know. At the end that was anyway. my we'll closing. If you yeah. have yeah, any more closing. Well, we do. I do have a comment here. It's not a question. It's This one uh, is from Don Herbert. He says, climate change is a myth. Why do you think he thinks it's a myth? Well, so that doesn't even... Uh, Misinformation. So I don't think anybody really legitimately uh, in the scientific world believes it's a myth, right? Climate has always changed. So we know that because we've had ice ages. So right. what he's referring to is not that climate change is a myth, but that he thinks human-caused climate change is a myth or modern climate change is a myth. So I can't be sure which one he's talking about, but I can tell you that the data is very clear. Mm -hmm. Even if you weren't to believe that humans were the cause— we are warming up. This earth is warming up, and there's no doubt about it. You might say, well, that's just urban heat island effect. Mm -hmm. Fine. Even if you believe that it's just urban heat island effect, it's still humans that are building yeah. the urban settings. Right? So it's still human-caused. 
But I can tell you this. If it were just urban heat island effect, we would only see this effect in cities. But actually, the climate is warming much faster in the Arctic and near the Arctic where there are no cities. So right. it's clearly not urban heat island. And by Good the way, point. the oceans are warming incredibly fast. And we don't have any cities other than Atlantis right. under the ocean. Okay? <laughs> so it's not urban heat island. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a part of it on a local level. Here in Tampa, our number of 90-degree days has increased. From the 1970s, we averaged 60 per year. Now we average 120. We've doubled the number of 90-degree days in 50 years. Yeah. Part of that is urban heat island effect, for yeah. sure, yeah. without a doubt. But yeah. there is a part of that that is uh, climate change due to the burning of fossil fuels. Well, we are getting all this, this information from climate models, but one of the... I mean, the topics that are set out there is that we cannot trust climate mm -hmm. models. Okay. Well, what I've done is I've compiled two different studies that were done a long time ago, and there's more yeah. than two, actually. The first one is from Exxon, the oil company. Oftentimes in, in, in climate science, we have a lot of these special interest fossil fuel companies that are fighting climate science because they don't want necessarily they want to sow doubt in the climate community in, the, in yeah. the public community because you know if we have if we start weaning ourselves from 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 fossil fuels they they stand to lose a lot of money right right so there's been a lot of pushback a lot of deceptive practices well i want to show you something in particular this actually is directly from exxon's uh research in the 1970s 80s and 90s yeah okay and i know it's hard to see this this is a document that was from their actual research a couple documents actually so let me first zoom into one so this was from one particular model from Exxon in 1982. Mm -hmm. And the black lines on both of these, the yeah. first black line on top indicates their projection of the carbon dioxide increase. And then the second black line that you see under it near the red yeah. line, that indicates their projection of what the temperatures would do. Look at how closely. And then the blue line indicates what they thought, the, excuse me, the blue line indicates what the actual carbon dioxide concentration has been. Oh my, right on okay? the money. It's right on the money. This was 1982. Same thing with temperatures. Actually, Exxon overestimated how much the temperatures would go up by a little bit yes. in their model. But it's really so they, close. They knew this was going to happen. They knew this was going to happen. And here's another example. Uh, we're going to go here. This is all the models that uh, this particular paper, and this is from Jeffrey Supron, um, uh, and, and it was released in 2023 if you want to look it up. Uh, these are all of Exxon's models that he at least uh, plotted here between 1977 and uh, 2003 and you can see the actual temperature rises in red mm -hmm. look at the look at all the gray and black lines those yeah. are the exxon models yeah. pretty close very close. now we don't know what's going to happen after 2020 right yeah it's going to keep going up clearly according to exxon's models yeah but the models have been great okay so forget about exxon let's yeah. go to let's take someone else's models okay this is james hansen he is the fam most famous climate scientist in the world mm -hmm. he's the guy who testified before congress in the 1980s and there was a big headline the next day saying global climate change is happening or actually it was global warming is already happening or something yeah. like that okay so he's famous for this look at his climate projections in 1988 versus what happened his scenario, scenario B, is the blue line indicating how much he thought the temperature would rise. And look at the actual temperature rise in red. Yeah. It's almost perfect. Now, of course, it yeah. every year it goes up a little, goes down goes, a little. Yeah. But if you did, if you drew a straight linear line through that, you would see they both Pretty end close. up almost exactly in the yeah. same place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've known the computer models, when predicting the average global temperature, and I'll come back out of that. Yeah. When predicting the average global temperature, they have been incredibly accurate, mm -hmm. off by just a little. But right. just knowing what the what the future increases in greenhouse gases may be, especially carbon dioxide, we can tell within a small margin of error mm -hmm. what those global temperatures will gonna, are going to be. That is pretty amazing. Yeah. I am amazed at those Exxon climate uh, models. That's, that's how close they are. Yeah, well, they you know, and that when those were primitive models. Right now, yeah, imagine yeah, how good our cl climate right. models are. Yeah. Yeah. So the last question was the one that was about, about is it okay, too late? well, climate change is real, but it's too late. There's nothing we can do about it. We're just going to have to suck it up. Yeah. So uh, what I'll do is I'll do this question because it's kind of part of what I've already discussed. And then we can see if there are any more questions or comments. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So let's go to that and graphic and I will bring it up for you. So I like to call it the climate challenge. And for years, I've, I've called it the climate challenge. Some people call it a climate crisis. I don't particularly like that. I think a crisis is when your house is on fire or you just had a heart attack. You know yeah, what I mean? Or, you know, or if some people call it the climate emergency. I think at times it's an emergency. Let me come back. I, yeah. think it, I do agree. Some, at times it's a crisis, right? If there's a big, huge fire in, in, in California and yeah. houses are being swallowed by it and people are running for their lives 
Be, and, 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 and a lot of these fires are, in fact, made a lot worse by climate change. Then, yeah, at that moment, you can call it a climate crisis or an emergency. There are going to be people who are going to, you know, angry climate mm -hmm. people are going to be angry at me because, you know, it's an, it is an emergency for people who are poor, especially, right? right? Farmers in Africa who are losing their farms because it's getting too hot and they can't grow anything. Big droughts are popping up where they wouldn't have popped up at all before, yeah. before climate change. So, yes, it is an emergency for some people. But for people in this country— mm -hmm who can't relate to that necessarily. For them, it's not necessarily a crisis or an emergency. So let me go back to this graphic yeah. and say, I call it a challenge. And I call it a challenge because people like tackling challenges, right? Mm -hmm. They like to say, you know what? This is a challenge, but we can beat this. Mm -hmm. So I think it empowers people. Now, it's not too late. And here's the reason, and we talked about it before. Yeah, We know what is causing it. Sometimes we have problems and you go to the doctor and they're like, listen, I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what it is. Yeah. We know what's causing it. We know how to solve it. We have all the solutions we need. Yeah. The missing piece is willpower. And I have to be honest with you, a lot of the willpower problem is disinformation. There's a ton of disinformation mm -hmm. being paid for by special interests. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of billions of dollars, or I should say hundreds of millions of dollars, over a billion dollars that has been spent yeah. uh, over the course of the last couple of decades trying to sow doubt, mm -hmm. and people actually believe it. Yeah. Um, it, there was, if you look at, if you look at, if you pulled Democrats and Republicans 15, 20 years ago and asked them if they think climate change is real, the number was the same. Yeah. Democrats and Republicans were pretty close. All of a sudden, you know. When was that? This, what year was that? Uh, I'm going to go back 15, 20 years okay. or so. Let's I'd, say, I'd let's have say to give 20 it, years ago. I think it was probably 20 years okay. ago. Okay. There was pretty e equal footing. Everyone mm -hmm. was kind of on the same page. Yeah, mm -hmm. we think it's real. Um, but at some point it became a political issue, uh, probably around the time that Al Gore decided that he was going to make it one of his pet projects. Mm -hmm. Um, he really heightened the, uh, awareness of climate change, but I do think it, it, it kind of threw uh, a fork a in, in yeah. the partisan road. And since then, a lot of special interests realizing that it's become an important topic in people's minds have been spending money to sow disinformation, and they yeah. do. And the way they do it is it's not always we don't believe climate change is happening. They don't say that anymore. No. They know climate change is happening. They don't even necessarily argue that it's humans, although sometimes they try to throw it. Sometimes they say, yeah, but it's good for the world. Climate change will be great. It'll be warmer. Or, or you know, um, uh, it's too late. We can't do anything about it. That's mm -hmm. another myth that's being thrown around you yeah. know, by people who essentially want to stop action on climate change. So let me tell you the last thing, Val, yeah. which is... Why are we so limited that we can't imagine a better life for ourselves? Why do we why can't we believe that by tackling climate change, mm -hmm. by having cleaner energy, by not mm -hmm. putting all this pollution into the atmosphere, that we can't actually make a better, cleaner environment? Yeah. A better life for ourselves? Yeah. That we can't create more jobs? Yeah. Why can't why are we so stifled that we can't imagine a world where we're not fighting all these Middle Eastern wars over oil? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, why do we want to do that? You know, if we're not reliant on other countries' oil and gas because we're self-sufficient in producing our own, yeah. uh, you know, all of our own resources right. through various methods, mm -hmm. well, we're not going to be sucked into as many wars anymore. So why can't we imagine a better life? Why are we so right. stifled that we just, you know, are yeah. are just trying to not make life worse? Right. When do we get I to think, that point? I think one of the, the reasons could be, uh, you know, affordability. I think we talked about that in some of the other episodes that it's hard for people, but there's other alternatives, you know, windmills. We talk about, we talked about yeah, that, turbines, you know, all, right. yeah, solar turmoil, panels. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Solar panels mm -hmm. too. Yeah. But there's that financial sure. situation that, uh, you know, that goes hand in hand with the, I always say this, look, you know, things don't necessarily get cheaper no matter what you do, right? Life prices always seem to go up. My father said that when I, when I was young, and I don't know if I 100% believed him, but I do believe him now, you know. Generally, prices never really go down. No. Um, no matter what, if, if we stay, if we just kept putting gas in our in our fuel tanks, yeah. I mean, gas goes up and down, but but the trend line is up, right? I remember right. when I lived here in Tampa 20-something years ago, I paid $1.30 or 40 for gas. Well, you, you know, just and despite yourself. the fact that it goes up and down, <laughs> despite the fact that it goes up and down, it yeah. still linearly goes. Oh, it goes up, up right? absolutely, yeah. So when we switch to clean energy, it may drop the price of some types of energy, but in general, the price is still going to probably take that track, which is on a linear sure. up. But you know what? It's very predictable, because the price of that kind of 
energy doesn't go up and down based upon oil markets and wars, right? Because right. the sun, although it may not shine on Thursday, it's going to shine on Friday. Right. Although the wind may not blow on a Saturday, it's going to blow on Sunday. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot less volatility and a lot more stability, which businesses love stability. Yeah. And I think people love stability too. They could do a lot better if they could plan their futures better. Absolutely. So I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and say that the price of energy is going to come down. It may or may not should, right? Because technology as you make more of it, the price comes down just like that big screen TV that used to cost you $5,000 now costs you $500. True. So technology does bring down prices. Mm -hmm. But believe me when I tell you, those industries will find a way to charge you more. Right? We right. all thought when we got cell phones that somehow our phone bill will go down. Oh, we're right, going to yeah. cell phone. To their... Now all of a it sudden we're out. paying more. Yeah. Right? So industry figures out how to make money off yeah. it regardless. But technology should bring down the price of, mm -hmm. of, of, of energy. But yeah. it may or may not. But one thing you can be sure of that when we have sources that aren't dependent upon wars in the Middle East, instability, that kind of thing, that overall the prices will be more stable and predictable. I like that. Okay. Stable. Yeah. Do we let have me, any more Yeah, questions? let me check and see okay. if I have any more comments right. or any more questions. Um, mm. You know, I told Val that it's really hot what? in this in this weather center. She, he did say it that. Is, I think it's hot. Rebecca, do you think it's hot in this weather center? I told Jeff to take okay, Rebecca his jacket does not, off. Rebecca's always cold no matter what the temperature is. Yeah. So that, she doesn't even count. JB, is it hot in this in this in this stream center? It gets warm. Okay, I feel like it's hot. Now, I, I will just say that I told Val I think it's hot. She said no. I'm like, I'm a meteorologist. I know <laughs> when it's hot and when it's not hot. I'm just stalling, by the way. Okay, yes, I see that. David here has a question. Um, I don't know if I I don't know what he's referring to. Maybe you do. He says, What if we're bulb temperature and how does it work? Wet do you know? Bulb. Yeah, he wants to know about oh, wet, bulb wet bulb temperature. Bulb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wet bulb work. temperature, and I'm, I'm I'm not surprised he asked about that because Key West had like a heat index of 114 to 115 What's, yesterday, which yeah. basically tied the record, and it was mid-May. Um, and so everyone's kind of talking about this. Wet bulb temperature, I mean, I'm not going to get into too many details, but it really just has to do with the temperature of the air when you factor in the moisture. It's kind of like dew point, kind of like humidity, but it's a temperature that is derived from the evaporation of moisture on the thermometer itself. So you basically yeah. you basically take a thermometer and you just you just whisk it around like that and you evap you evaporate all the moisture and you see what the temperature uh, ends up being. That's a bulb. That's a bulb temperature. But the point is is when we look at wet bulb temperature, um, we're trying to figure out a temperature. We're factoring in humidity with the actual temperature to try to figure out the human tolerance to because you know it's not just heat, right? It's actually the humidity is worse in many cases. Yeah. What really d dictates how hot it is outside and, and how uncomfortable you are and how much time you can spend outside outdoors, that has to do with not the heat, but more so even the humidity on that given day. And the wet bulb temperature, mm -hmm. it's called wet bulb global temperature, takes into account the humidity. Thus, we can tell, you know, how dangerous it really is. Because if I tell you the temperature is 100, but I don't take anything else, you don't know if it's 100 and dry or 100 and wet. If it's 100 right. and wet, you're in trouble. Right. If it's 100 and dry, you're okay. Right. Okay. Another question, Aja Davis, she says, what about the impact from concrete in urban spaces? Yeah, huge. Urban heat island effect. Mm -hmm. We talked about it a little. I'm going to talk about it again. We need more trees so we can shield the concrete. Concrete and urban spaces that don't have trees, you can see a temperature increase on a sunny day of 10 to 5 to 10 degrees. So if you're standing on a, you, everybody knows this who lives in Florida, right? You're standing on an urban street that doesn't have trees. It's about 10 degrees warmer, or it feels 10 degrees warmer. Maybe it's five degrees warmer, maybe it's seven. But trees really matter, and, and the urban setting traps more heat. So there's no doubt about it. That is a part of it. Um, so when I talked about how Tampa has twice as many 190-degree uh, days than we used to about 50 years ago, a big part of that is urban heat island. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it may be equal to it, uh, around, it's hard to know exactly, um, is is greenhouse gases and uh, the increase in water temperatures of the Gulf and uh, and the Bay. Think about it. If your Bay temperatures are warmer, your Gulf temperatures are warmer, your temperatures at night can't go down as much. So those two things. But that heating, obviously, in the ocean is not due to urban heat island because there's, right. again, no cities in the ocean. That is due to greenhouse gas forcing, and eventually that heat transfers and, and gets stored in the, in the oceans. So, um, yeah, urban heat island is a big part of it, but it's still human caused climate change because if it weren't the humans that built these cities, I don't know who did. Right. Okay. Okay. We have another, it, this is a combination. It's a uh, question in common all at the same time. It's from Joe Mill 
Couric. I'm sorry if I butchered your last name. And he says, why do we only want to go back to 1900s? Because that was the end of a mini ice age, a period of global warming that lasted from around 1300 to 1850. Mm -hmm. Of course, it got warmer, he says. Well, okay. First of all, the Little Ice Age, um, and it and is a real thing. They call, did he call it the Little Ice Age? What do you call it? <laughs> yes, a, a it period, a mini, he called it. A oh, mini it's ice called the Little Ice Age. The late, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, There's actually yeah, a name for right, it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so first of all, a lot of these um, changes in temperature were regional and not necessarily global. Now, the Little Ice Age may have had some global implications, but a lot of it was focused on Europe, okay? Mm -hmm. And yes, we have seen climate changes that are natural that happen in small regions, like maybe just Greenland or maybe just Europe, mm -hmm. over the course of a couple of hundred years or so, where patterns do get established in that particular area will get cooler warm. But the pace of change and the amount of change that we have accomplished in the past hundred years or so, and really mostly in the last 50 years, it rivals that of, of, of by far of any other time. Let me explain. When we look back at the history books, beyond even the Little Ice Age, and we go further back, we find no evidence that we've ever warmed at least in the past, honestly, 120,000 years. Now, I'll just say that we don't have the resolution of data to be able to pick out decadal time frames past like 2,000 years or so back. Yeah. But we find no evidence that the climate ever changed as fast as it is now in the last 120,000 years. Mm -hmm. um, and that that right now we're our climate is changing at 10 times the rate of natural climate change, the fastest that we know of, 10 yeah. times at least, and yeah. actually much faster than that. Yeah. So it's true. We have had cool and warm periods. The problem is we're warming too fast, okay? We don't it's, – there's a chance that this earth would be just fine, and so would the animals, if we warmed another one, two, three degrees, mm -hmm. but we did it over the course of tens of thousands of years – but doing it over the course of 100 or 200 years doesn't give humans and more so animals and plants the time to adapt. Yeah, we did talk about that off mm -hmm. camera. Yeah, last yeah. night. Good deal. Well, those were all the questions and comments okay. that we have so far. I'm going to stop reading anything else. Okay. Uh, but if you do have any other questions or comments for Jeff, if you want to continue leaving them here or they can email you where, Jeff? Oh, there you, oh. Well, I'm going to put up our, yeah. So you can you can send us weather questions, and I'll, I'll sometimes use these for the Baradilly bonus. Mm -hmm. You can send them to weather at WFLA.com, okay? And if you want to read more about uh, this article, you can go to our our, uh, our website, WFLA.com, and then click on the weather tab, and then click on Climate Classroom, and, and this, this show will be available for you, and the article is already available for you there. And uh, another thing I want to remind you of is that you can uh, watch this, not just on Facebook. You're probably watching on Facebook or you may be watching on WFLA.com. But we will take this uh, this whole uh, show and we're going to throw it over to YouTube. It'll be available later today. And also you can listen to it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. So Val, as usual, I always have a great time doing these shows with you. Thanks so much for uh, for joining me and co-hosting. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, everybody, for all your questions. And I want to thank all of you for being here. And we'll do it again next week or the week after for My Climate Classroom. Oh, and Val's Climate Classroom, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Bye, so much, guys. everybody. All right. Have a great day. Watch or listen to Jeff's Climate Classroom, powered by Armor View Window and Door on WFLA social media platforms. And find Jeff's Climate Reports on WFLA.com.